Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Lampel. I'm professor of neurology at the Convent Hospital Barmherzige Brüder in Linz, Austria. I'm a headache specialist and I'm the current president of the European Headache Federation. So uh, we, will, we will start with, um, with, a, with a, a patient, a case. Uh, this is Beth. Uh, she is 30 years old. She is a teacher and she was diagnosed with um, chronic migraine and medication overuse. Uh, she has problems with weight gain and there's a comorbidity. She suffers from depression. Uh, she uh, plans to start a family in two to three years, and recently she tried preventive treatment with a topiramate, but had no meaningful change in migraine frequency or severity. So uh, th there are a lot of factors that we uh, consider to give the best option for, for the patient. So uh, here you see in the slides lots of key considerations uh, that we have to take into account when we put the patient on a preventive uh, a treatment. So in, for, for my, in my uh, impression, uh, two things are the most important ones. The one is, what is the, what the question about comorbidity? Is there any comorbidity? Uh, if there is one, which one? Most of the comorbidities is uh, sleep, depression, anxiety, and uh, and the next one is patient's preference, of course. And this all leads together to improve the quality of life of these patients. Here you see also some other key factors that are, of course, important, like contraindications or response to previous treatments. However, at the very end, it is most important that we can uh, enhance the quality of life of our patients so take all this into consideration and try to find uh, the best treatment option for this patient. And there are again uh, some considerations for this treatment goal. Try to ask the patient to find uh, if, there, if there are comorbidities, are they managed appropriately uh, what about the adherence uh, to the uh, to the treatment, especially when you put them on a monthly base of anti-CGRP monoclonal antibody? Are there any other concomitant medications that could possibly interfere with uh, with their treatment? And of course, is the patient informed uh, about the treatment options, about the outcome, about the adverse events? And at the very beginning, before you start with all this. So please ask the question to the patient directly. What are the goals, the treatment goals, because you and the patient has to work together for a couple of months or a couple uh, of years possible. Uh, so what are the, at the very end the treatment goals that you will reach uh, with uh, this possibility of, of uh, treatments that we have? Um, this is, this are, all these strategies uh, uh, are, um, have the possibility to improve the quality of life, especially when you put uh, two treatment options together, uh, the, the prophylactic treatment with an anti-CGRP antibody and the acute treatment with an, uh, uh, with an anti-CGRP antagonist. So uh, like uh, in this trial with Ubrogib, and, and you see here uh, that the treatment optimization after 30 days of a treatment with Ubrogib and plus an anti-CGRP antibody, either it's a ligand targeting or receptor targeting anti-CGRP antibody is around 80%. So uh, I think that's a, that's a huge improvement for this patient when you put them on this on this possibility and option uh, concerning the CGRP um, um, antibody and CGRP uh, antagonist. I think the most important thing is to keep a diary for these patients because we have three main causes of treatment failures. The one is the poor adherence, possibly due to side effects. You all remember the all the drugs uh, that were uh, prescribed like uh, amitriptyline, beta blockers, or flunaricine. We have huge side effects. 
and um, I think they do not align to patients' preference. The second one is incorrect timing or inadequate dosing of treatment. And the third one is suboptimal efficacy or insufficient response. And to recognize and evaluate, uh, is, it is very important to have a diary, a headache diary, and uh, to review the, uh, the, the month of migraine days, to review the severity, the use of acute medication, and what is most important, I think, the quality of light or the migraine-related disability. When do we have to reevaluate this? I, I propose two to three months after the initiation uh, of uh, the prophylactic or the new prophylactic uh, treatment. Uh, you can you can read this paper if you want in 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 extenso. Uh, it was published uh, last year by Simona Sacco and and myself. And and the key recommendations on the use of CGRP molecular antibodies you will find here. So that completes also the evaluation after three months, considering a pausing after one year to reevaluate if there is a natural cause of the disease. There is a a decrease or an increase also possible in the migraine frequency. Um, you should, you should, in my opinion, use and discuss uh, the 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 use of anti CGRP antibody treatment as first line treatment option in episodic, also in chronic migraine, especially in my in chronic migraine with medication overuse. So there are some cautions that you have to be aware of. I think. Avoid, of course, uh, the use of monoclonal antibodies in pregnant and nursing women. Uh, it could be uh, a, a, a cause and, and cause a case by case evaluation in patients with uh, vascular disease and risk factors. Uh, example is renal phenomenon. Uh, we have some severe constipations seen in patients using the uh, arenamab, and um, there is an insufficient evidence to recommend. Uh, the combining of anti-CGRP antibodies or to switch between anti-CGRP antibody within a short time frame. Do you have the option to switch from a ligand uh, uh, to a receptor antibody? Uh, and I would uh, recommend to wait at least three months or three consecutive treatment periods with a monthly given a monoclonal antibody. So let's go back to our patient case, to Beth. So the question is, what could be the, the, the best option for her in the upcoming year uh, to treat her, her chronic migraine, uh, which is associated uh, with the medication overuse? Uh, and, and she has also some problem with, with comorbidities, weight gain and depression. So uh, we have to take that also into account. So in, in my uh, option, the older uh, Prophylactic agents is like flunarisin or beta blockers are absolutely contraindicated because she suffers from weight gain and she suffers from from depression. So the only thing, and according our, to our guidelines and recommendations, I would put her on a uh, on a anti CGRP monoclonal antibody for the preventive uh, as a preventive treatment uh, for her for her migraine because. To pyramid, she had no meaningful change in migraine frequency and severity. So I think the best option that I would discuss with her uh, would be uh, uh, the anti-CGRP monoclonal antibody in a prophylactic uh, treatment. So and reevaluate first after three months and then after one year. So these are my thoughts about that. Uh, I hope there were some new informations and important information that you can use in clinic daily practice. And with that. I wish you the best for you and your patients. Hi, my name is Simi Parikh, and I am a headache medicine specialist and a neurologist at Thomas Jefferson University at the Jefferson Headache Center. And today we'll be talking about the practical management of CGRP monoclonal antibodies in the use of preventive treatment for migraine. We'll be reviewing a few cases as we talk along uh, what this means. So the first case is Ruben. He's 35, he's a male, and he's a plumber. He's been diagnosed with chronic migraine, and he's failed traditional preventive medication. And he's agreed to start anti-CGRP monoclonal antibodies. So 
In the initial conversation with the patient, when we choose to start a preventive therapy, such as a monoclonal CGRP antibody, I like to review a few important key points. The first is I like to ask the patient themselves, what is their goal for treatment? Now, often a patient will say that their goal falls along two categories. One is improvement in their health-related quality of life. So this may mean that they want to miss fewer days of work, they want to attend school, they want to take part in family functions, or two, they want to reduce the headache severity, the frequency, and the duration of their migraine exacerbation. In this meeting, I also like to highlight another key factor of success of preventive treatment, and that is reduction in the use of acute medication. Now, that is important for a few reasons. One is that acute medication use can have side effects. They can affect the liver and the kidney. The second is that overuse of acute medications, which can happen in people who have frequent migraine, can actually lead to something called medication overuse headache or medication adaptation headache. This is a new type of headache that can actually interfere with the success of migraine management. This type of headache is also a risk factor for progression from episodic migraine to chronic migraine. The other point that I like to highlight in that initial meeting is that a patient can do a couple of things themselves to help boost the benefit of the preventive therapy we're discussing. And that includes some lifestyle modifications. Studies have shown that 20 minutes of physical activity, um, of cardiovascular activities in particular, is just as good as another preventive treatment. So I encourage exercise. I also encourage them to maintain adequate nutrition and to have um, a good handle on sleep and stress management. However, I don't overemphasize you know, lifestyle modifications or even assessing for triggers. There are some things that are in the patient's control and some things that are out of the patient's control. And I tell them whatever they can do in terms of trigger management and lifestyle modification management is great, but the preventive therapy that we're discussing is also very important. Finally, I also tell them to keep a migraine diary. Now, this is helpful for a few reasons. One is it can help make sure, ensure the patient that they're adhering to the prescribed plan. And two, it's something that we can review at future visits to see if that medication is actually effective for the patient. Now, let's meet Rosa. Rosa is a 38-year-old female. She's a hairdresser, and she's been diagnosed with chronic migraine. She's been receiving preventive treatment with arenumab for two months. When we are gauging the response of anti-CGRP antibodies, there are a few different ways that we can do this. One is that we want to make sure we're gauging the response at the appropriate time. The AHS guidelines recommend that we gauge benefit of a CGRP monoclonal antibody that is administered monthly at three months after treatment initiation, and if the medication is administered quarterly at six months after treatment administration. But what do we mean when we're saying gauging benefits? As we talked about, benefit can be gauged in a few different ways. One is, has that medication improved the patient's headache duration, severity, and frequency? And two is, has that medication improved that patient's quality of life? Now, these measures can be done with, with absolute numbers, and it can also be done with scales, such as the MIDA scale and the HIT-6 scale. Hannah is a 30-year-old female. She's a caterer. She's been successfully treated with feminismab for 15 months, and she wants to pause treatment because she plans to start a family. Now, this is one reason why monoclonal TGRP antibody treatment is discontinued. The AHS and the EHF guidelines recommend that CGRP monoclonal antibodies are not used in people who are planning to become pregnant or who are pregnant. And the reason for this is because monoclonal TGRP antibodies have a long half-life. The half-life ranges from 27 days to 31 days, and it can take five uh, half-lives or more for that medication to be completely out of one system. 
Besides pregnancy, there may be other reasons to pause or restart CGRP monoclonal antibodies. One reason may be that the patient feels like their migraine has become stable. Now, once a patient stops a preventive treatment plan, it is expected that the patient would have some slight regression in their migraine control. But if that regression is more than what that patient expects or significantly impacts their life, then the CGRP monoclonal antibody may be restarted. Right now, while there are long-term studies on monoclonal CGRP antibodies showing that they are safe and efficacious, there is limited data available showing what that optimal therapy duration is. Now, how do we gauge treatment failure? Let's take a look at Malik. Malik is a 48-year-old male, he's an accountant, and he's been receiving arenumab for three months but he's reported only one fewer migraine day, and he's wondering if this treatment is working for him. So there are a few ways to approach gauging treatment failure. One is to make sure that that treatment has actually failed. If the patient is not adhering properly to the dosing regimen or if they're using the medication improperly, this may not truly be treatment failure, but rather a need to review how to use and administer the medication. Another reason why a patient may describe treatment failure is that they're having a significant side effect. It is important to anticipate those side effects. For the most part, for CGRP monoclonal antibodies, the side effects include injection site reactions, and serious side effects include hypersensitivity reactions. Some CGRP monoclonal antibodies may also cause constipation or hypertension. So if that patient is complaining of one of these side effects, that must be taken into account. Another reason for treatment failure may be that the patient is reporting no clinical response to treatment. And again, it's important to gauge what that means. Has the patient truly not responded at all? Or are they unhappy with the level of their response? In cases of partial response, it may be helpful to then add an adjunctive therapy. For example, onabotulinum toxin A has been shown to be synergistic with monoclonal CGRP antibodies. If the patient describes complete lack of response, then we may consider switching the CGRP monoclonal antibody to another treatment. While evidence regarding switching monoclonal CGRP antibodies is still limited, the EHF guidelines do suggest that switching monoclonal CGRP antibodies should be considered. So we've reviewed the practical applications of monoclonal CGRP antibodies in the preventive treatment of migraine. Again, remember that the goal of treatment for with monoclonal CGRP antibodies includes both improvement of quality of life and decrease in the migraine burden.